Hi friends, it's Barbara. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, I'm going to be bringing you a book tag and it is the Pumpkin Spice Latte Fall Book Tag. Okay guys, so how are we all doing? It is the 1st of September as I'm filming this video for you. Yes, of course, this isn't the 1st of September when you're watching it, but it is finally September. It is time for chunky sweaters. It is time for Halloween mugs. It is time for Halloween decor. And it's time for pumpkin spice latte candles, which I have just over here. Hold on, I'll get it for you. It is here. It smells so good. I wish we had smelly vision for sure. But I thought I would take the opportunity now as it is September and we're coming into the darker nights and the spooky, spooky, spooky time of the year. I thought I would film this book tag and I thought I would have a wee bit of fun with it. This tag was originally chosen and made by the paperback biker. I will tag the original video down below for you so that you can see the original video in all its glory. It's a very, very good video. She did have a lot of fun with it and it was, I really, really enjoyed watching it. It's a very, very fun tag and there's lots of questions. And so without further ado, let's just get into it and see what the questions are. All right, so if I'm looking at my phone, it's because I have the questions here. There are 11 questions in total. Don't have them all on the top of my head, so I'll be reading them off here. So first question is leggings, which is definitely something that I wear a lot of in the winter. I tend to go very, very casual around the house whenever it's this time of year. So they do keep you nice and warm as well. Leggings, a book that you ran out to buy or pre-order. So I don't actually have it at the moment because it is a pre-order. I think it's actually due in the next couple of days. I need to check, double check my dates but it is Stephen King's brand new release fairy tale and to say that I am hyped for this one is what we would call an understatement if anybody follows me on this channel or anybody knows me at all in real life you will know that Stephen King is literally a legend he is literally the best author that I know of in the horror genre I absolutely love him I love all of his books I'm collecting all of his brand new horror releases and fairy tale is the next installment in basically his new releases so as I said during the next couple of days love 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 the cover the cover is brilliant don't know a lot about it don't want to know anything really about it to be honest with you I want to go in not really knowing too much but knowing Stephen King it's probably a modern twist on a fairy tale made into a horror story but as I say don't know much about it but this would be what I would probably use an answer for question number one guys so question number two and just to make you aware I don't have all the books to hand and um, so I'll put up graphics for any books that I don't have but you know we'll do our best so number two question number two is Uggs who has a pair of Ugg boots I have a pair of Ugg boots for in the snow and for walking Novak I absolutely love my Uggs they are a staple staple fall autumn winter sort of um garment that you need in your wardrobe and for Uggs it is a book that isn't that great on the outside but is great on the inside and the one that I'm going to go for is Hide by Nell Patterson. Now I don't know about you guys but I don't really like the cover of this book it's just not it doesn't it doesn't call out to me to buy it. Um, I got this book on a recommendation from my lovely friend Rebecca we both buddy read it together and I can tell you it was a five star it was absolutely fantastic it's a really really good close set sort of um thriller uh, where there's a murder and there's a group of people on an isol isolated sort of party um sort of get together in a snowy part of of the island and yeah basically someone dies and nobody knows who it was but it's it's definitely someone in that group so you're sort of pacing together all of the clues and the suspense and the creepiness of this was absolutely fantastic the pacing was fantastic everything was just really good about this book and so I would say don't let the cover put you off although you might not agree with me but I didn't really like the cover of this one but it was as I say a five star and I absolutely loved it okay next up then is question number three infinity scarf and we all have one of those as well a book that went on for long way too long and felt felt like it would never end so i just want again this is going to be graphic it is the island by adrian mckinty this was a new author to me this book was so severely hyped in the book community that if you didn't pick it up then there was something wrong with you because literally the recommendations and the reviews that were coming in on this one were really really good 
I did not like this book. I did not like the storyline. I did not like the characters. I did not like the family dynamic. I did not like anything about this book. I DNF'd it. I gave it to about 150, 170 pages, but it's not for me. And it went on way, way too long. And I think I read far, far too, too much of it, but I wanted to give it a chance because of the hype and everything else. But this book was not for me and just went on way, way too long. Right, so question number four is Chunky Sweater, which I have on. The book at the top of your TBR right now. And this one I do have to hand, yay! And um, this was kindly gifted to me by my lovely friend, Rosie. Um, she is a long time supporter of mine. I used to work with her a long time ago uh, when I used to work as a, as a travel agent in Thomas Cook. But it is The Retreat by Sarah Pierce, which I actually have only just found out is the sequel to The Sanatorium. Barb hasn't read the sanatorium and this is at the top of my TBR. So I think we're going to have to rectify that by reading both. But yes, this is definitely at the top of my TBR and definitely one that I want to read right away. I'll read it out to you in case you haven't come across this one. Although again, it's all over social medias and in the book community at the moment. It's getting really, really high praise. So you definitely will have seen it by now. Most are here to recharge and refresh, but someone's here for revenge. It says they couldn't wait to stay here. It sounds like it's a closed setting. I love closed setting thrillers. Absolutely love closed setting thrillers. Can you tell? An idyllic wellness retreat has opened on an island off the coast of Devon, promising rest and relaxation. But the island itself, known locally as Reaper's Rock, has a dark past. Once the playground of a serial killer, it's rumoured to be cursed, but now they can't leave. A woman is found dead below the yoga pavilion in what seems to be a tragic fall, but DS Ellen Warner soon learns that the victim wasn't a guest. She wasn't meant to be on the island at all and they would do anything to escape. The longer Ellen stays, the more sugar she uncovers, and when someone else drowns in a diving incident, Ellen begins to suspect that the old stories about the island are true, because history seems to repeat itself and the guests may not make it home alive. Does that not scream, read me now? Oh my God, although I can't because I need to re read the sanatorium, but I'll get to it, I will get to it. It is definitely at the top of my TBR. Hopefully it's the top of yours too. Let me know in the comments below. Question number five is Messy Bun. Love that. I don't think I have enough hair to put my hair up in a bun. Actually, I might try it later on. Messy Bun, a book that was easy, cute and fluffy. And this isn't a fall recommendation. It's more of a summer recommendation, but I read it when it was on my cruise in May. And I was reading just sort of books that were um, set on cruise lines and cruise ships and all that good stuff. It is, I've already unhauled it. It is shipped by Angie Hockman. And this was just a lovely, lovely, lighthearted rom-com fluffy all sorts of uh just give me such good vibes i had so much fun reading it it was fantastically written it was funny the banter was great between the two characters and i just absolutely love this one so if you haven't picked it up already yes it might be sort of a summer um cover maybe calling out for the summer but you know it's still only september so if you can get to it i definitely would it was absolutely fantastic hey right, guys so question number six is glasses got my glasses on here a book that opened up your eyes to something new e.g a social issue a way of life a moral dilemma etc 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 so recently in the last couple of months i have read this book again it's been on hold to my mom i'm very very sorry that i don't have these books to hold up but you get the gist it is the family next door by john glatt and it is the heartbreaking imprisonment of the 13 turpin siblings and their extraordinary rescue now if again if any of you guys follow me for any amount of time if any of you guys know me in real life if any of you guys chat to me at any any time any given time get to know me i'm not a memoir type person but recently i have read two or three memoirs that have absolutely sucked me in and just held my interest so much that i want to read more and this had been recommended a few times um in a book club that i was part of a patreon and i wanted to get my hands on it i wanted to read it it was absolutely heartbreaking it was so deep it was so graphic what those children went through what they had to deal with the ordeals that they had when they were growing up the parents how they treated them their escape as well was was so graphic in detail and so heartbreaking too and just to think of what those sort of kids must be like now that they're grown-ups and how they have dealt with coming into society as people who are, are are not in those conditions anymore and aren't under that sort of duress anymore and it must be so hard for them but 
it's definitely a book that I think that everybody should read. I think it's something that everybody should educate, educate themselves on. It goes on, it happens, it happens all the time. And it was just absolutely fantastic. And it absolutely blew my mind and opened my eyes up to what other people are sort of going through. And you know, you know how good my life actually is whenever I read something like this. And it was just, it was fantastic. It was heartbreaking. It was very, very hard to read. Don't get me wrong, but it was fantastic. And 110% I think you should pick it up if you like a memoir or you want to learn more about this sort of thing then this one is definitely one to get your hands on. So question number seven is makeup and obviously um, if you're dressing up this year you'll be putting some scary makeup on your face. A book with the great colour combinations on the cover and I do have a book for this one as well to show you. This was kindly gifted to me by my lovely friend Shell who I've tagged to also do this book tag and this video and it is Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. Guys, does that not scream fall to you? I mean, it's got the orange on it, it's got the black on it, it looks like it's really spooky and really, really, yeah, scurry. And it's also orange on the bottom. <laughs> so yeah, when the dust, obviously the hardback cover is orange as well. So that just screams to me, those colors of sort of fall, Halloween, it's spooky, it's creepy, it's orange, which is fall. And I mean, how much orange do we need in this sort of frame right now? <laughs> There's so much orange going on with my jumper and the pillow and also the book. But yeah, definitely would recommend this. I haven't read it yet. It's on the TBR for October. Good thing, cool things are coming in October, should I say. This is on the TBR, so number eight then is manicure a book with staying power one that isn't popular anymore but is still a quality story and holds up against today's competition now to be honest with you i wasn't sure what one i was going to use for this that was it's a very hard question to be honest with you i'm not saying that this book um that i have isn't popular anymore it is very very popular but it's not talked about, it's not spoken of, it's not sort of recommended as much as what it used to be when I first come onto booktube and into the book community. And it is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. And also another one that I would like to mention, an honorary mention, would be Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. Both of which were five stars for me, both of which got me back into reading and starting up this booktube channel, to be honest with you, because I realised that I wanted to make a hobby out of my reading and, you know, wanted it to be my pastime along with the channel as well. These two books for me, as I say, I'm not saying that they're not as popular as what they used to be. They, they totally are. They're just not spoken about as much and they're not talked about and they're not mentioned as much as what they used to be. But I tell you, they have stay in power all right. If you haven't read either of them, please pick up a copy from your library as soon as you can or, I don't know, on your Kindle. I'm sure you can find them somewhere in the library maybe. And yeah, just read them. They are absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I know you'll absolutely love them. Okay, dokie, so just a few more questions then. Number nine, cute bag, because everybody needs a cute bag, don't they? A book that would, you would like to carry around with you and give to a random person on the street because it's so good that you want the whole world to read it. And I have only just recently read this this year. Again, I have it to hold up to hand. I'm so happy of two copies of it, actually. It's Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is the first classic that I've ever read. I was so, so, so worried going into this one that I wasn't gonna like it. I picked it up primarily because I had seen the trailer for the Netflix adaptation on the film on Netflix, as I say, of Rebecca. And I loved, I loved the concept. I loved the trailer. I thought the film looked really, really fantastic. So I decided to go out and get myself a copy, um, although I think this was gifted to me by one of you lovely guys, but I got myself a copy and I read it within the last couple of months at least. And my goodness me, I loved it and I want everybody to read it and it's absolutely amazing. It's it's class I think is one of the modern classics, so it's not like your your sort of older version classic, so it was a good bit easier to read. Um, I still haven't got to the film, I really really want to watch it over October time. Um, I think it'll be a really good um, fall kind of film, which would be a good recommendation for you guys as well. But yeah, if I had to give this out to pretty much anyone that I would, I would just give it out to anybody that I could find and say look this is what you need to read maybe if I could maybe make I like I really really want to build a little free library in the new year in my development I could put Rebecca in it and make sure everybody reads it couldn't I <laughs> that's a good idea isn't it
Right, so last couple of questions then. Question number 10, iPhone, a book that you were glued to and read faster than any other book. So this is gonna be the first book that I read in 2022 and my first five star in 2022. Again, it's on hold, it was an art copy, but it is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. This book I sat and read in the afternoon of New Year's Day. I literally read it in three and a half hours, nearly four hours. It was so fast paced, it was so enthralling, it was so thrilling, it was so good. I literally was turning the chapters and I needed to know what was going on. I don't know really what, what to tell you other than it has been likened to and then the were by Agatha Christie. I do see sort of the, um, you know, the um, differences with that. You know, I can see that that's, that, that could be sort of likened to those two uh, sort of um, novels. But it, in a nutshell, it's about nine perfect strangers. It's about nine strangers, nine lives, and they're all basically get a letter and they are on a list. Um, one by one, they are getting sort of killed and they don't know what they have in common. They don't know why they're being killed. They don't know why they're on the list. And basically, it's up to them all to sort of work out what's going on before they all die. And... There's more to it, but it's absolutely fantastic. And lastly, guys, we have question number 11, which is Pumpkin Spice Latte, a book that had food or drinks on the cover or that has food and drinks in the story. Now, I haven't read this one, but recently I saw someone had, a booktuber had recommended it as having food and sort of recipes and drinks and things in the actual story itself. And they really recommend it if you were looking for something like that, then to pick this one up. It's Arsenic and Adobo and it looks absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love the cover of this one. Again, I've absolutely no idea what this one's about. I just know that it centers around food and drink um, in the actual storyline. So it's one that I have downloaded from the library. I have the ebook on my Kindle. It's not on the TBR yet. It's sitting on the Kindle waiting for me to read it. So hopefully if I can get a free slot in September, October, I will read it. But yeah, I think this could be a real fun one to go with for food and drinks. And what better for the last question, which is the pumpkin spice latte. So friends, hopefully you enjoyed that book tag. If you do want to do it yourself, I tag you. I tag absolutely everybody. It's completely up to yourself. As I say, I've credited the original creator down below if you want to go and take a look at their original tag and what they answered to these questions as well. I'm really excited to see if you do do the tag. Tag, please tag me on YouTube and let me know that you've done it because I'd love to see what your answers are and see how different they are. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up because it does help support my channel and does help me make more content and better content as well and if you're not already subscribed please hit that subscribe button I recently recently hit 1k which was the biggest milestone that I had and goal that I had for this year so I'm very very delighted I'm very very happy to have all of you guys' support but obviously if you're not subscribed already hit that button there's going to be lots more fun bookish content and for that guys all I can say is is happy September happy fall happy autumn happy winter and I will see you in the very next video